All right, this is for Alessandro Vescanzuti, I think. Uh, let's see Kanzuti. Sorry about that. Okay, so the first thing that I would say right off the bat is that the issue that you have is everything is um, everything is very faded, and in this particular one, you really want to push the the hard lines on your um, on your on your stuff here because what's going to happen is by putting in those hard lines uh, you're going to define your shape a lot more and so as you can see just by simply going here and just adding in a little bit of that um, you know that hardness um, you're going to define your shapes a whole lot better. Okay. The other thing is uh, you have some tangents going on with the arms, and so they look a little bit awkward. Um, but what you want to do is, and I'm just going to kind of really roughly paint here, just this the rough um, clean line here, and especially in the bright areas here, uh, you want to really harden out those edges and so in this case what I would do is I would use a hard line something like this and we're just going to kind of like so and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the brush to really emphasize Let's uh, invert this first. So we're going to use the brush to really emphasize the the detail of everything. And so you can put in, you know, your your shadows and things like that in here, and still maintain a, a nice even stroke. And then the problem is, let's invert this again. Then the problem is we're going to take this. And I'm just going to start off with a bright. And then a mid-tone. And then mid-tone. And then as it rounds around the corner, we're going to get the darks in there. And so when I hide this, and we'll just kind of find that in there. All right, so when you hide that, you see how this now now becomes very bright and very precise, and I think that's what you want to really work on. You want to you want to get those edges sharpened down here, because the problem you have going on is you've got a lot of um, you know a lot of shapes and, and all of that stuff going on, but the problem is they're all very soft and flowing, and so there's no real sense of uh, foreground elements and things like that. So I mean, simply even adding in something hard in the foreground, like so, just gives gives me a better sense of you know foreground motion. Um, and so by doing that, especially in this area where everything needs to be precise, um, you're going to get a lot sharper edges. And so something like this can have that hard edge on there like so and you can still use a little bit of that fade to kind of give it the idea that there's light coming from there and so it's it's actually a hard edge with with a light on top of it and so that's the first thing that I would tell you to do the other thing is, and again, define your shapes a little bit more. Again, you have this hand here, and it doesn't feel, um, it's got the same depth control as everything else. So again, the aspects of your, um, your scene, I'm just going to really quickly just rough around that. But simply by adding in that hard light like so, and then 
I'm going to add in some of this light here. So you can see by adding in, let me just hide that here. Uh, oops, not that one. Oh, I'm sorry, H. Okay, so as as even with this in here, you can see that by putting in that that in there, you're going to get those real nice shadows and real real subtle lighting in there. All right. And so that's what you want to do to get that hand to pop forward a little bit more. And so that's kind of the, the big thing, I think, on all of this is you want to really define your edges. Um, especially with the light source being so close, you're going to get the, the hard shadows on there. And then um, the best thing I would tell you to do is, is do a clay mock-up and then light it. And I think you'll, you'll find a lot of the shadows are... Um, going to really kind of sell themselves a little bit more um, especially let's just go ahead hard edge here especially like things like this where you just want to see that key shape coming in not you know not the the faded out edges I and mean, you can fade out as you get back but you need to have that that variation in there and then your other drawing here is something kind of the same same thing so the problem you have is that you've got this kind of broken into um, some different parts and, and the problem is I think your your silhouettes aren't reading as well and so you've got a, a 3d you know ballet dancer going on here um, or a light dancer or whatever uh, you have and then you've got clouds and you've got um, a lot of different pieces going on here but the problem you have is that your light source isn't def really defined like you've got two major light sources you've got this one here which is your ballet dancer and then you've got this strong light behind it and so simply going in and the first thing I would do is I'm gonna just cut out um, I would cut out the, the figure and I'm just going to and then you also it looks like you have a blue light source going on here too so and so I'm just kind of and then it looks like you also have green light in there too and so you need to kind of define those light sources and I'm just going to cut this out here. And and then I'm going to just actually cut out just really roughly this here. So the problem you have is, I'm going to copy that. Okay, so the problem you have is that you've got this strong light source in the back here. And this the smoke kind of feels awkward um, because you don't have things, um, there's no reason for it. Um, and so what I would say is that if you're going to use this backlit here, uh, what you want to do is you want to have, uh, let's grab a soft brush here, and I'm going to just slowly paint away um, some of this browns here, and I'm going to put back in some of the, the light source here, so something like that. And so by muting these tones a little bit more, and I'm going to just grab your bright yellow and I'm going to mute these tones a little bit more 
something along the lines of like that. Um, and then we can even add in, uh, let's add in some of this here. Just going to really roughly kind of put this in there, but I'm adding in some of those soft lights to really push that back. And then I'm going to inverse this and take some of your darks and really push kind of those darks back. And so now that gives me a kind of a full skyline, uh, whereas before you you had um, you have just that light forcing everything everything out and so now with that in place um, I can actually go in here and kind of mute out some of these tones and even if you're doing like a blue um, you know we can we can add in some of and I'm just I'm gonna add in some more depth into this some more rubble or whatnot in here. And so something like this. And again, we're just going to kind of emphasize that and inverse this here and so on and so forth. So you can kind of get that better, uh, better concept going on. And then we're going to add in some darks here. I'm just going to grab a rough, rough brush here just to oops, let's invert this. Select invert. Okay, so I'm just going to grab in this rough brush here to kind of sell that idea. And then what I'm going to do is if you want to add in, um, you know, movement in front of that, then what we're going to do is add that movement in as a uh, light source above this. And so you're just going to kind of really focus on the silhouette. Now the next thing is your lighting here. Um, your lighting on this should be reflecting some of the light from behind it. So you're that is the strongest light that you have. I'm just going to kind of and so you can see just by simply adding in some of that that rim lighting it's going to kind of really push how strong that light was. All right. And it will be overpowered by it will be overpowered by the simple um, the simple light source of this. And then this is because this is my primary, you know, strongest light source here. And I'm just going to kind of glow uh, fade out this here. And then we're just slowly erase some of this so I can put that back in. So if this is my strongest light source, um, I'm going to be pushing that light source on everything else. So in this case, I'm going to overlay. Uh, let's try screen once. And just move that down here. But then that light source is going to take precedence. And um, it's going to mute out your other colors. And then these light sources uh, right here, here, is, are going to kind of cast some of that green on your, on your back of your head and things like that. Um, and then so by adding that blue in there, you're adding another light source and it's getting even more complex. So you need to... Um, dump the the blue and you know keep everything just mute these here and keep everything kind of um, shaped and formed 
so that it makes some semblance of sense. Um, like so, probably not as much light source there. Probably won't get so much light source because he's turned away from you. So it's going to really push that that light dark aspect. Um, and this light here kind of fades, fades out. Um, so the other thing too is just make sure that that light source is consistent. Um, and the best way to do this is honestly get a get a small figurine or something like that, uh, something that has neutral colors, and then put different light sources on there so you can see how it reacts, and so you can see how everything kind of works works together. Because right now you've got so many lights going on that that it's it's mute, muting everything out, and you just want to make sure that the silhouette reads well and you can kind of read everything on there as well. Um, you know, and that, I think that's the biggest problem with this piece is that you've got, you've got going on here, um, you know, if you look at this here, you've got going on uh, so many different light sources that you need to kind of emphasize what's, what's what. Um, you know, just, just, just a quick, quick look you have this is your primary light source here uh, you have this is a secondary source here you have these as third and fourth sources and then you have some light coming from here too so you have five light sources going on and I think that needs to be kind of all kind of dealt with um, the other thing is this this up here I don't know if this is part of the character or if it's like a plant, a moon, or something like that. So that needs to be better defined. Um, what I would do is by just putting this stuff on. If this is this is part of this, then you want to go in here and define define it with some simple like logic things, like just you know, just some line work or, or, you know, dots like that to kind of define that, that story a little bit more. All right. I hope that helps.